excuse me, little dog. Hi, right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful midsummer day in early March here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. Uh, deep in the Point Lonesome Swamp and the Oasis of Freedom. It is Monday morning, March 7th, 2022. And uh, even though it's Monday, you know, I kind of miss not doing my Hopium Roundup rant on, on Saturday. Uh, I, I just didn't have an Emmy, you know. I, I, I'm as hard as I am trying to avoid that uh, little distraction over the pond. I mean, it's the only thing on the news anymore. All right, so uh, I just, anyway, since I missed doing that, and I, and I know how disappointed all of you were, I guess I'm gonna break out of the mold and not be able to resist talking about that little distraction, at least in this first story. Uh, we're just going to do four. I've got to uh, start covering my lumber piles. They say it's going to some rain moving in tonight. We shall see down here in the drought parched sunshine state. But anyway, guys, this might be the hopium headline of the year and uh, <laughs> just uh, cannot resist it. <clears throat> from the Telegraph, there is a 1 in 10 chance of nuclear apocalypse, but keep buying shares, says investment firm. <laughs> Whoever has the biggest stock portfolio wins. <clears throat> A financial research company has raised eyebrows by saying there is a 10% chance of civilization being destroyed in a nuclear apocalypse while urging their clients to keep buying shares regardless. BCA researcher Canadian Business told clients to quote, stay bullish on stocks and quote, largely ignore existential risk, close quote, as their investments will become irrelevant if the Ukraine crisis does lead to nuclear Armageddon. <clears throat> the, the investment group puts the chance of a civilization destroying nuclear war in the next 12 months at an uncomfortably high 1 in 10 chance as tensions between Russia and the West es escalate. Peter Berezin, chief global strategist at BCA, wrote, quote, despite the risk of nuclear war, it makes sense to stay constructive on stocks over the next 12 months. If an intercontinental ballistic missile is heading your way, the size and composition of your portfolio becomes irrelevant. Therefore, from a purely financial perspective, you should largely ignore existential risk. The risk of Armageddon has risen dramatically. Stay bullish on stocks over a 12-month horizon. Yes, the Kremlin has put Russia's nuclear forces, they're claiming here Russia's nuclear forces, the largest in the world. I would have to check that one out on high alert and has argued that NATO's onslaught of financial sanctions are akin to an act of war. Global stock markets tumbled last week. Uh, the FTSE 100 suffered its worst week 
since March of 2020. Uh, Mr. Berezin added, quote, if Putin concludes that he has no future, the risk is that he will decide that no one else should have a future either. BCA warned that markets could experience a, quote, freak out moment over the next few weeks, even if World War III is ultimately avoided. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you, you know, and I'm, and I'm with the guy. There's a 90% chance we're not going to have a nuclear Armageddon in the next year. That, that's pretty good odds, 90%. Uh, and, there, and there's not a damn thing you're going to do about it, whether we do or not. I, I guess you can duck and cover. Maybe you can put on a mask. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so why not? I mean, I'm going right on about building tiny houses and running an Airbnb. Uh, I, I mean, why not? All right. Let's look at the some corporate greenwashing from the French news service. America is finally, America is finally cleaning up its abandoned leaking oil wells. Yes, they uh, start out looking at this rancher who's been screwed. Uh, anyway, all right. The United States is pockmarked. The United States and Russia and Venezuela and good God, the, the entire planet but they're talking about in this article, the United States is pockmarked with perhaps millions, plural, with perhaps millions of oil wells that are unsealed, have not produced in decades, and sometimes do not have an identifiable owner. The detritus of lax regulation and the petroleum industry's booms and bust, many states have struggled to deal with these wells, which can leak oil and brine into water supplies, as well as emit methane, a particularly potent greenhouse gas. Yes. But... Don't worry, Joe Biden is to the rescue. In a first, in a first, Washington is making a concerted effort to plug these wells through a $4.7 billion fund passed as part of an expansive overhaul of the nation's infrastructure so the asphalt corporations get $350 billion, while orphan oil wells get $4.7 billion. Uh, um, said Adam Pelt, senior attorney at the Environmental Defense Fund, quote, the money, is the money available to the states has never been commensurate to the scale of the problem, and now, for the first time, it will be. Yes. Uh, but then it does admit, towards uh, deep in the article, the funds will likely not be enough to solve the problem entirely. Okay. So, uh, you, you know, for those of you who don't know it, uh, I was a, quote, investigative reporter, mainly dealing with environmental issues for about seven years before I became a real estate agent and investor. And so, uh, unlike the uh, reporters and editors at the French News Service, I decided to spend about three or four minutes doing the numbers here. And uh, of course I had to make 
the, the, the main thing uh, I had to pull out of the air was they're saying nobody knows how many of these oil wells there are. Perhaps millions of them in this country alone. So I use the very conservative estimate of one million. Assuming there's one million instead of the millions plural that there are. So taking the rosy estimate that there's only one million uh, of these damn things pockmarking our country, I went over to the trusty percentage calculator website. You may have heard of the percentage calculator website. It's an excellent website if you're ever trying to get an honest appraisal of the uh, corona panic, but we don't talk about that here. So we're going to use percentage calculator to get to the greenwashing from the Biden administration. Okay. $4.7 billion, 1 million oil wells. So 4.7, now this is just plain, I'm sorry, not even percentage, this is a plain old calculator. This isn't even percentage calculator. Plain old calculator, $4.7 billion divided by 1 million gives $4,700 per well, $4,700 per well, assuming only $1 million. So then I would think that a reporter or an editor, their next question might be, how much does it cost to cap an abandoned oil well? Okay, so this is from the article, Decommissioning Orphaned and Abandoned Oil and Gas Wells. For plugging the well only, for simply sticking a plug in it, cost average roughly $20,000, $20, while full decommissioning, the plugging and the remediation remedi remedi and all of that, cost an average of $76,000 dollars per well, $76,000 per well, but in rare cases, the cost can exceed $1 million per well. So $4,700 you have to spend, $20,000 just to stick that plug in it. Okay, so using the average of $76,000, which is how much it really cost to, to uh, take care of an abandoned oil well. Let's go back to calculator. Uh, $4.7 billion if you spend an average of $76,000 per well, you will have enough money to you know, plug and remediate 61,842 wells. 61,000 wells. You know, this is green washing horse shit. Okay? Uh, I could keep going with this calculator, 76,000, uh, okay, one more, 76,000, 76,000, calling that the average, uh, if you wanted to take care of one million, not millions plural, 76,000 times 1 million, that would mean you would need to have, good Lord, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, I wish you would put goddamn commas, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, instead of 4.7 billion, 76 billion dollars. 
uh, to plug one million. Obviously, if there's two million, then you need a hundred and fifty-two billion dollars, not counting the ones that cost over seventy-six thousand dollars. This is greenwashing bullshit. It, it, it is Joe Biden uh, trying to pull the wool over these little limp dick lefty. Oops. I need to remember where I am, uh, pulling the wool over these little lefty greenies, clueless moron eyes. $4.7 billion is not going to touch this problem. Anybody with a brain knows this. Uh, any reporter or editor who wanted to spend five minutes uh, pointing this out uh, could have done it, but then the article would never have shown up in the mainstream media. Okay, of course the biggest uh, story on the planet is uh, gas, gas prices, pain at the pump. I noticed that gas, uh, it was four dollars yesterday, probably more than that today here in Florida. Uh, the price of uh, oil hit $139 this morning. People already talking about $200 a barrel uh, oil. Uh, and all of these, there, there must be 50 articles today about uh, this is, you know, blaming that if if we stop importing Russian oil, that if we stop buying Russian oil, this is the reason that oil has gone up 60% or whatever uh, in, in, you know, in the past couple of weeks. What percentage of the, of, uh, the gasoline that we burn uh, in the U.S. comes from Russian oil? What percentage? Okay, the price of a gallon of gas has gone up, uh, good Lord, uh, here, in, here in Florida has gone up like 25 or 30 percent in the past week. So does that mean that, uh, does that mean that 25 to 30 percent of the gasoline uh, in this country is refined from Russian oil? No. 3%, 3% of oil that we burn in this country comes from Russia anymore. 3%. That this whole thing about blaming the price uh, of, uh, you know, the, the price of gas, blaming it on uh, blockading Russian oil is unadulterated horse shit. Do you get it? It is the other 97% of these uh, greedy uh, bastards uh, looking to cash in uh, on this distraction. <clears throat> but don't worry, we don't need Russia. Right here, right here in Reuters News, we do not need Russian oil when we have Canada, and not just Canada, the Alberta tar sands, the Alberta oil sands. Take it away, Reuters News. Alberta oil can be a solution to U.S. energy supply crunch. Yes. Alberta, Canada's main oil producing region, meaning the oil sands, can help alleviate the global oil supply crunch caused by energy disruptions. Alberta Energy Minister Sonia Savage said on Sunday, don't you love that name, Sonia Savage, Alberta has some spare pipeline and rail capacity and can move more oil to the United States, Savage said in Houston. Yes. <coughs> Um, quote, we are the solution, not Venezuela and others, Savage 
told Reuters. Yes. She also said it was unconscionable for any nation to be buying Russian crude oil or refined products in light of its invasion of Ukraine. Yes, it is unconscionable to be buying Russian oil when all we got to do is go pump some more of the world's dirtiest hydrocarbons on the planet. Yes. There you go. Canada last week banned Russian crude oil in imports. Savage said the United States should also ban imports of Russian crude and refined products. So, all right, we have the Canadian oil sands. Now, this next one, guys, uh, you just have to uh, decide for yourself where the hopium is in this story. I just love this story. It, uh, it, it, it's, uh, this is kind of, uh, I don't know what you call this. Uh, you, you find the hopium in this story out of Thailand. Thailand and uh, how many other countries uh, on the planet today. <clears throat> Thailand bids to avert population crisis as birth rate crashes. And you all can imagine what the population crisis is in Thailand according to the mainstream media. Thailand is scrambling to encourage its people to have more babies to arrest a slumping birth rate, offering parents child care and fertility centers while also tapping social media influencers to showcase the joys of family life. Yes, the campaign comes as the number of births has dropped by nearly a third since 2013 when they started declining. Last year saw 544 births, the lowest in at least six decades. Hallelujah, only 544,000 new people. How big is that island? Isn't Thailand an island? How big is that? Only 544,000 new mouths to feed. <clears throat> While Thailand's demographic path is similar to other Asian economies like Japan or Singapore, as an emerging market relying on cheap labor and a growing middle class. The implications for Southeast Asia's second biggest economy are far more profound. This is Tira Siderchek from Thammasat University. The data reflects a population crisis where the mindset toward having children has changed. Yes, and somebody's, a, some senior health official whose name I cannot pronounce, quote, We are trying to slow down the decline in births and reverse the trend by getting families that are ready to have children faster. Yes, plans include opening fertility centers in 76 provinces. There you go. Uh, three cheers for Thailand having the lowest birth rate. Here is how uh, Thailand is going to save the planet. There you go. There is the future of the planet. Isn't that cute? But, uh, anyway, since I have no place else for it, I'm just going to tag this one on. Uh, not so much, well, it's hopium that anybody is going to read this, I guess, is hopium. But good for, good for the mainstream media uh, running this story. 
climate voice of the people climate change not doable without population change yes this is by some fellow in auburndale i guess california donald t milligan this is what he has to say about it <clears throat> human induced climate change including more frequent and intense events has caused widespread adverse impacts blah 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 according uh, to the UN panel's climate report, blah, blah, blah. All right. Human population was one and a half billion in 1820. Today, it is over seven billion. Yeah, like 7.99 billion. And in all the things that humans need to live, and most of that requires that we cover the earth with houses, or plow up the earth for food. I asked the same question, why is the label climate change and not population change? Nobody ever, ever talks about the need to rein in the population increase. The experts talk about climate change as if that is doable without a population change. Even the lemmings have a built-in biological need to destroy themselves when they reach a certain population level that brings them back to viable numbers. That, that, that is a big myth about the lemmings, but of course uh, it is nature that uh, brings the lemmings back uh, into check, not getting thrown over a cliff by uh, a Walt Disney movie. But anyway, you know what he's saying. Uh, the smartest animal on the planet, he doesn't identify what animal that is, the smartest animal on the planet cannot, will not, recognize that its increasing numbers are the bottom line for destruction of the planet. It all goes back to pay me now or pay me later. And yes, anyway, amen, brother Donald Milligan, whoever you are, a little ray of hopium that somebody gets it. But uh, anyway, I have procrastinated as long as I can. And I notice in the short time I've been doing this roundup, the clouds have moved into the Sunshine State and uh, I gotta start covering up all of these piles of lumber before the big storms get here the next few days. They're saying it's gonna be 32 degrees here in a few nights. It is like 90 degrees now. The low Friday, the low on Friday night is 67. The low Saturday night, 32. So uh, I guess we have one more dose of old man winter. So get out there and enjoy old man winter while you still can. Because the summer of 2022 will be here before we know it. And we all know what that means. Bye, guys.